Hey guys, Tyler here, PartsForScooters.com. In this video, I'm going to discuss the needle clip position and how to adjust it. The reason to change the needle clip position is to change the mid-range throttle response. It is a very simple job as you will only need a screwdriver, Phillips end, to make the adjustments. This adjustment is important because on some stock scooters, well I should say most stock scooters, they come with this, carburetors that are tamper proof. So you can't open the bowl to change the jets and you can't even change the air fuel mixture. So the only adjustment we have left is that needle clip position. In this video I'm going to show you with the QMB139 carburetors, but it is the same steps with the GY6150 carburetors as long as they're the CVK style. In most cases, this adjustment can be done with the carburetor still attached to the scooter, but let me show you with it removed. First step, you're going to want to remove the two fastening screws that hold the top cap to the carburetor. There is a spring underneath, so hold the cap down while you remove the two screws. And be sure to use a good screwdriver as these screws can strip pretty easily. I'm still holding the cap down so the spring can't push it off. Slowly lift it up and it'll expose the spring in the diaphragm. I like to flip my cap upside down and keep the screws in there so they don't go rolling away anywhere. The springs simply pull out. Pretty easy. Now what we're left with is the diaphragm. On a stock carburetor, this diaphragm can be stuck to the body. What I do is I put my pinky in here and I pull straight up. And with your thumb, you can kind of press on the edge Break that seal. Don't pull hard. This rubber can rip, but pull it out and you'll have the diaphragm with the needle exposed. You can lay the carburetor body off to the side at this point. The needles are held in differently between the different model carburetors, like the 20 millimeter, the stock carburetor, or the black top carburetor. As an example, you can see in here, this one is held in with a little screw and plate when others can be held in merely by the tension of the spring holding this little white piece down that actually forces onto the needle then other models will actually have this white piece with a Phillips on it so you would stick the Phillips down in there do a third turn and it would release this white clip then you can simply dump the needle and retainer into your hand. Today we'll be working with the one held in with the screw and the plate. So what I first do is pull this gently up, get this diaphragm up out of the way of the slide. So now you can get your hand good and firmly around that slide to be able to get your screw down in here and break this screw free. Sometimes these are really, really, really tight. Sometimes they break free easily. If you have a magnetic screwdriver, the screw and plate should come up with the screwdriver. If not, you'll be able to dump it out in your hands. Set the diaphragm off to the side in a clean spot. And now we are left with the needle. Removing the sir clip can be a pain since, you know, we might not have the special tools or pliers small enough to grab a hold of this little guy and actually get that removed. So here's a trick. With that opening, see the opening in the sir clip? Put that down, opening side down on a hard surface. What we're doing here is supporting the clip and we're pressing the needle out of the clip. So what I'm going to do is put my finger as close to this clip as possible. Not in the middle as you could bend the needle. Put your finger as close to this clip as possible and cover the clip with your other finger. Now press down. You might feel a click. You might not. The click is the clip removing from the needle. But press down and kind of wiggle the needle just slightly back and forth. Sometimes the needle clip will fall right off like... I hope this one does. Sometimes they don't. This one's not off. I'm going to try again.
there it is. I don't know if you saw it just fall off, but this isn't the hardest surface. It's not the best surface to be doing this with, but sometimes you got to work with what you got. Here's that clip. Okay, let's get this clip moved. For my setup, I'm trying to lean it out. So I'm going to take this clip and I'm going to move it to the topmost section of this needle. Now, unfortunately, these clips are a little too tight to just push in with your finger. So we need something to help force it on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hard surface we used earlier to press it on just like we did to press it off. Only you got to keep the opening up to allow the needle to drop into the clip. You're not going to get this every time the first time. This will take a couple practices, but what I got here now is the needle is ready to fall in. I'm going to take a screwdriver and I'm going to help press the needle down just a little bit. Hear that click? That was the needle falling into the groove. Now what I do is I take, the, I take this little clip and I spin it. I want to make sure that it is fully seated in its groove. And that's inserted. That's ready to be reinstalled. So we've made our adjustments. Let's reassemble everything. There's a couple holes in the bottom of the diaphragm. We're aiming for the middle one. Drop the needle directly into the middle hole. Next, we want the plate. This plate is what holds the needle down. Don't worry about where this goes when you put it in because watch this. Drop it in, take the needle and push up on the needle which will lift the plate and then turn the needle. We're aiming for the big hole. A little bit off, a little few more turns. Good enough. The screw will recenter it. Now, put the screw on the tip of the screwdriver and if it's not magnetic, hold the tip up a little bit so gravity holds the screw on the screwdriver and you want the hole where you're putting the screw upwards slowly push them together and you can kind of fish for the hole. Once you find it, turn. If the screw binds instantly, don't keep turning as it might be stripping and you'll want to just repeat the process to find the hole again. I've got the screw snugged down. It is now ready to be inserted into the carburetor. Keep in mind that this needle is loose so it won't fall right into the atomizer perfectly. And also keep in mind the rubber tab and the notch in the body where we clock it. So what I do is I look in through the opening and I make sure that the needle is falling right into the atomizer. It's pretty simple. Sometimes it can be off center and hit the body. Don't, don't force it. Make sure it falls in and then make sure you're clocked. And then make sure this seal is good. Go ahead and push this down. You want to drop your spring in. You want to take your cap, push that down, and just hold it with your fingers in place. I preload both of my screws and then fix them down. If you were doing this while it was on the scooter, it's a lot harder to aim that needle down into the atomizer. If that's the case, just slowly press down until you feel the needle find the atomizer and then you can continue on with the rebuild. We now have a new mid-range throttle position. A quick test ride will tell us if this is good or not. If it happens to be worse than it was before, move the clip in the opposite direction. This is a trial and error process to dial in your mid-range throttle. The carb shown in the video is our part number 151-222. It's the 20 millimeter upgraded carb for the 139 QMB engine platform. And if you like this video for any reason, be sure to click like, click subscribe, and drop us any lines in the comments. Any questions, any comments, anything you want to see in the future, let us know. We're here to help. Thanks.